Good evening. Welcome to Sunday the 6th, the Sunday night. I hope that this Labor Day weekend that you are having time to rest from your labors. Today we're going to be talking about thin places. And we have just so much to say about this idea of thin places. Those places where heaven and earth meet, where God kind of shakes us up a little bit and where we become part of something larger than ourselves. So much to say about that. We heard so many good stories that we are going to continue that in a series about thin places this fall. The thin places of creation, the thin places of justice, the thin places of community, the thin places of suffering and awe and wonder. Next week, we actually will not um, meet as a regular Sundays at 6 service. Our conference is doing a service of creation care, and so we encourage you, we're going to be sending the link of, around and invite you to join in that. Creation is one of those thin places. I invite you to take a deep breath. God of glory, you know each of us by name and shower us with your grace. But our minds can't comprehend the vision of your glory or the vastness of your love. As we glimpse your greatness, reflect on your many gifts, help us so we may return to you the praise that is yours alone. God of all who wanders in the wilderness, you go before us as a beacon and a guide. You lead us through every danger and sustain us through every desolation and bring us home to the land that you have prepared for us. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ.
Exodus 33, 7 through 23. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp. He called to the tent of meeting, and everyone who sought the Lord would go to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. Whenever Moses went to the tent, all the people would rise and stand, all of them, at the entrance of their tents, and watch Moses until he had gone into the tent. When Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent. And when the Lord would speak to Moses, and the Lord would speak to Moses. When all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise and bow down, all of them at the entrance of their tents. Thus the Lord used to take this, used to speak to Moses face to face, as one speaks to a friend. Then he would return to the camp, but his young assistant, Joshua, son of Nun, would not leave the tent. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now I have found favor in your sight. Show me your ways, so I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is you, your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight? I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we'll be, we shall be distinct. I and your people from every people on the face of this earth. I will do the very thing that you have asked. For you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before the name. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no one could, shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, see there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes, I will put a cleft on the rock. And I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. And then I will take back my hand, and you shall see my back. But my face shall not be seen. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. It may sound strange, but there's always been something that feels sacred, that feels hopeful to me about the sunlight of a city in the morning. <laughs> It's a strange, thin place. I remember walking around cities when I first went out of the country, when I got my very first passport to go to London to spend a couple weeks in a summer abroad program at Oxford University. It wasn't really even a summer abroad, it was a month abroad, let's be honest, but I decided to spend three weeks before that with my mom. We got our little backpacks and we got our Brit Rail passes. And so we spent three weeks backpacking around England and Scotland, Ireland, Northern Ireland and Wales. I remember standing on a hill <laughs> on the Isle of Skye, looking out at this place that for me felt very ancient <laughs> and thinking that the line in between those two places, between heaven and earth, felt very, very thin. Here's the thing, <laughs> no place is more ancient than another. I know the United States sometimes feels newer. <laughs> it's because Europeans, white-skinned folks like me, haven't been here quite as long. For many of our native brothers and sisters, they have seen thin places in these, what we would consider ordinary American spaces for a very long time. But for me, there is something about being on a journey that makes everything feel like a thin place. Everything can feel either surreal or kind of like Groundhog Day, <laughs> over and over and over the same day again. And yet there are still moments that catch our eye. <laughs> little um, 
glimpses of the presence of God. For some of us, it is watching the shadow of a butterfly flit um, right through our view. For some, it is in the holy meal of the Eucharist, of Holy Communion. For some, it is remembering how God met us just where we needed to be in a time of grief, whether that was sitting on a bathroom floor or meeting a stranger in a park that said just the right thing. Maybe for some of us, it's been turning around. I remember walking around in the Garden District of New Orleans, walking around in streets of China or hills in Scotland or Ireland and thinking about all of the many people, all of them that had to eat and drink, make a living just like me, all of the people that I would never know their names, people going off to work, and people loving their families or their friends well. And somehow this realization caught me that God knew each of their names, that God was with them in the moments of making dinner, in the moments in which they listened just a little bit to the sound of the rushing wind. the call of a nearby bird, that they looked at the way the light dapples in the morning or the evening. That, that same God that met them in each of their individual spaces also meets me. Our scripture today talks about Moses and how he met face to face with God. Thank you to Davidson and Diana for reading those so beautifully. Moses was a prophet. <laughs> he indeed had a special relationship with God. But the way that Moses met God in the tent of meeting, we believe is available to all of us that we are invited into that thin place where heaven meets earth. For us as Christians, we think that the thinnest place is through Jesus. <laughs> the word that became flesh and dwelled among us. That word is tent or tabernacle. That through him, we have seen the glory of the Father filled with grace and truth. Jesus walked streets that were maybe just as ordinary to the folks around him as my streets in downtown Wilmington. Streets that were just as awe-inspiring as the streets of Scotland or a foreign city in the morning. This week, where will God meet you? Where will you see him? What is your thin place?
we are so grateful for the gift of technology that allows us to bless and to commission and to send out people from our space, even when they have already been sent out. Annie is joining us from Scotland and her uh, dorm room in St. Andrews, Scotland, where she is finishing up how many more days of quarantine? Four. Four more days of quarantine. So she may be done by the time you see this. But I am here in Wilmington, and so we are so grateful to be sending her out on behalf of our Wrightsville family and our Sundays at Six family to pursue a master's in sacred music. She's going to be in the School of Divinity? Yes. Is that true? And tell us a, a little bit about what, what, that, what that degree is, Annie, that you're going to be pursuing this year. So it is a degree in sacred music, um, and I will be ordained as a minister of music. Um, I'll have to go through a little separate process for the Methodist Church, but just for the church in general, I will be an ordained minister of music. And so I'll be learning about um, theology and um, how that relates to um worship and arts and um, we'll learn some about the visual arts and music and uh, and movement and all all the different components of um, how we worship. That's incredible. Well, we are so we are so grateful to be part of your journey and we in the Christian tradition, it is something that we do to send people out. It's as far back as the book of Acts that we commissioned people. Sometimes we commission mission teams when they go out, but we are going to be sharing and invite, uh, invite all of the congregation, everyone watching to share with us in a, in a liturgy of prayer of blessing and sending for Annie. And so this is part of what it means to be a body that we that we go with you even when we are apart from you and that we hope that you will feel our love and our prayers and our support and we can't wait to hear about your journey as you as you go through it so i invite um, annie and i are going to be praying the liturgy on the screen and i invite you as you are watching as you are worshiping with us whether it is on Sunday at six in morning prayer, morning devotion, or at some other time for you to, to pray along with us in a space of prayer at a point in the, in the commissioning, I'll invite you to lift up your hand and to think about laying on of hands. You normally um, would do, imagine yourself placing a hand on Annie's shoulder or her head as a way of um, praying God's Holy Spirit to flow through us to her. And so let us pray. The church is a family. United by our common recognition of Jesus as our Savior, we are all siblings. We share good times and bad. We share each other's joys and each other's sorrows. We lighten each other's heavy burdens. Together, we laugh and cry. Together, we worship and praise God. Together, we live. And so we are grateful that some of us answer a call of God in our lives. Dear friends, today we recognize the ministry of Annie Jewell and we consecrate her to a special task in the service of Jesus Christ, along with Moses, along with Isaiah, along with the disciples, Annie says, Here I am, send me. Annie, we commend you to this good work, and we promise you our prayers and our encouragement and our support as you study to become a minister of music. May the Holy Spirit guide and strengthen you so that in this and in all things, you may do God's will in the service of Jesus Christ. And so Annie and all of those gathered over the internet wires, will you affirm your faith in Jesus? And will you promise to live out the good news in the world? If so, let us say, I will. I will. I will. And now I invite all of, all of you who are, who are watching and worshiping with us, Together, Annie and I will be um, stating our faith and our beliefs, and we invite you to say that and affirm along with us. 
We believe in God, creator of the world. And in Jesus Christ, the redeemer of creation. We believe in the Holy Spirit. Through whom we acknowledge God's gifts. We commit ourselves to the rights and dignity of all people. And to the improvement of their quality of life. We dedicate ourselves to peace throughout the world and to God's justice for all nations. We believe in the present and final triumph of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And we gladly accept our commission to manifest the life of the gospel in the world. Amen. So friends, I invite you to lift up a hand <laughs> and Annie, um, may you receive these prayers of our community. Um, may you receive the Holy Spirit empowering you for this good work to which you have been called. Let us pray. Almighty God, look with favor upon your daughter, Annie, who is committed to following Christ and to learning and serving in Jesus' name. This year, give her courage, give her patience, and give her vision and strengthen all of us to hear your voice, to answer your call on our lives, to follow Jesus, to witness to the world, and to serve others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. I just, I just want to say thank you to you, Christina, and to all of our church, um, Sundays at six in particular has kind of given me, um, they've given me the wings to fly to, to go back to my testimony last week. Um, really, I am so thankful that I've had the opportunity to recognize that, um, that I, I do feel a calling and um, this is what I want to do with the rest of my life is mm -hmm. spread the good news and do it through music. Um, so really so much thanks to you and to all of our church family and i'm really excited to to see what this year has in store for me um and i'll certainly miss all of you a lot i'm already homesick and i'm less than two weeks in um but yeah thank you for everything i'm so excited and we are excited for you. Many of us watching were able to come out and to say goodbye um, the a little car parade. And so there are some um, pictures and videos of that. And we, we love you. And we know that this is not an easy time to answer a call, but we, I don't know, we're just so grateful to have this hopeful thing happening right now in a, in a time in which it feels like there is so much need and so much brokenness. And so we are grateful that God has called you and that you have said yes. So we miss you and um, pray God's blessings on you. And you will not be a stranger to us uh, even, as, um, even as you begin your work in St. Andrews. And so we are sending you all sorts of love. Thank you. Thank you. And I still, just so you know, am watching all of our services, even though I'm five hours ahead. <laughs> well, we, uh, we, maybe you will not be watching with us at like 11 PM. Maybe you will have good bedtimes, but uh, we know that you will join us and that you're with us in spirit. And so we are so, we are so grateful for that. Thank you. Well, so much love and thanks to you. Bye. Bye. Our father. Who art in heaven. Sia sanctificato il tuo nome. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Give me that
invite you to join me in this blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Thank you for being here tonight. Next week, we hope that you will worship with our Creation Care Worship Service through our conference. And we will see you in two weeks at six. Give me that old time religion. Give me that.